It's now just under two months since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, and cases of the virus, now labeled COVID-19, continue to rise. More Canadians testing positive for the deadly virus, one in Ontario and two in BC. We had an adult woman, a woman in her 20s, who arrived in Canada after having traveled in China. We have a new case of uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, who was diagnosed um, in a close contact of case six, which we reported last week. 11 cases in total discovered in the country, but the vast majority of Canadians now infected remain overseas, which include most of the 47 of the 120 Canadians aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship, docked in Yokohama, Japan since early February many receiving treatment now in Japan. Uh, we have obviously a number of Canadians uh, which are hospitalized in, in Japan. Uh, those are the people who disembark, who have been put in quarantine, who were on the Diamond Princess of the coast of Yokohama. Uh, we have about 40 of them because obviously the numbers change by the day, if not by the hours, because some are released and some uh, uh, might be admitted to the hospital. Some of those Canadians finally freed from the coronavirus hit cruise ship in Japan are sounding the alarm over the conditions they faced on board, calling into question the efforts made to stop the spread. Even after they announced the quarantine, people are still walking around, going upstairs to buffet and all that. I mean, it's not a quarantine at the time. Like, that's, that's scary. Others worried about the safeguards in place on the flight's home. Reports from an American plane evacuating passengers tell of little effort to separate those that did test positive from the rest of the passengers. They were put in, a, in an area towards the back of the plane, um, and but they were just kind of like wrapped in plastic. We had to walk past there to go to the bathroom. Our food was in the back of the plane. Maybe the most shocking and worrying case of how the outbreak is being handled on those ships, an 83-year-old American woman confirmed with the virus back on her home soil after given the all-clear. Their testing was only via uh, temperature. So I would have thought more aggressive testing should have been done. Tammy Hamilton from St. Catharines, Ontario, was on board with that woman and now worries the oversight may have serious consequences. If this is the first time that that's being picked up, how many of us may have it and how many people have we exposed to it? The latest numbers from the World Health Organization have those infected at over 80,000 with over 2,700 deaths. And though new cases and deaths seem to be slowing in China, 32 countries have now been touched by the virus. Canada watching closely as concentrated clusters have been popping up in Europe and the Middle East. Officials now telling the public they are braced for a possible outbreak here, cautioning doctors to be on alert. Airports across the nation meanwhile telling all incoming passengers to monitor themselves for symptoms. I will say there we are particularly closely watching um, some countries where there seems to have been uh, quite an increase in cases. The virus arriving in Italy with force. Cases surging from three to more than 200 in a matter of days. Seven deaths now confirmed in the country, with fears of the infection spreading. Small towns and villages being cut off. Milan's landmark cathedral and opera house shut, with Venice's famed carnival cancelled. Gatherings, school and soccer matches in the region suspended. In Iran, a staggering 50 people at least killed by the virus in just one city alone. An official from the city of Qom confirming the rising death toll that began less than a month ago. The country's deputy health minister disclosing he's contracted the virus. The biggest hotspot outside of China, though, remains South Korea. 161 new cases in the last 24 hours, bringing the total to around 800 and climbing. The president placing the country under a red alert. Uh, me and my mother and parents, friends are worried, very worried. Uh, it's dangerous. With many worried those concentrated pockets may signal a new stage in the spread of the virus, the World Health Organization says it's still too early to declare COVID-19 a pandemic, though still calling the sudden outbreaks deeply concerning, as Canadian health officials remain confident in our system. We don't want to be um, complacent just because that's the case. We want to keep looking at our surveillance, keep encouraging citizens and individuals who are returning, because most of it still is travel related, and coming forward if they think they have concerns and issues. And that seems to be working for us. Some are better prepared than others. It's a dynamic dialogue and continually ramping up and being prepared. Peter Meyer for Inside the Story.